Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled Karen thinks that her 13-year-old babysitter is trying to seduce her husband. Our next Reddit post is from Art Pliny. When I was a teenager, I started babysitting for families in my church. Between the ages of 12 to 16, I babysat for over 30 families, and I was highly requested in that community. I knew everyone, and I attended the church since I was four. Everyone knew me, and I knew everyone. We were very tight-knit. So I babysit for this one family that we'll call the Smiths. I knew the Smith family since I was 10, and they had kids that were younger than me. I was about 13 when this happened. I was babysitting for the Smiths, and everything was going well. They had a pool in their backyard, and the dad had told me to pack a bathing suit. He said, the kids will probably beg you to swim with them, but you don't have to. So I was scheduled to babysit these kids for about five hours, and four hours in, the husband came home to take a work call, and then he would take over for the kids and my parents would come take me home. 20 minutes before the dad got home, the kids wanted to swim. I agree and we all get ready. I had chosen a normal bathing suit for a 13 year old, but I had a larger chest than other girls my age and the mom of these kids. So the dad comes home and asks if everything is going well. I tell him yes, and he says that he'll come find us after the work call. Then, sometime later, he comes back out and asks to take another call. He asks to take a picture to send to his wife to let her know that I'll watch the kids for longer since he had another call. Everything went well, until the wife shows up. I'm helping to dry off the kids, help them shower and change as the wife gets ready to take over and the husband starts making dinner. I was wearing an oversized shirt, bringing the kids downstairs, when the wife signals to me. She pulls me to the side and begins to shame me. She tells me that she won't pay me from 4 to 5.45 because I was dressing like a slut and attempting to stray her husband from her. That my choice of swimsuit was slutty and she should have known better not to trust me. That I was a whore and my boobs would get me nowhere in life and I was going to be, oh jeez r-worded dress like that i was flabbergasted because i was barely 13 at the time and i wasn't wearing a revealing swimsuit i nod and profusely apologize because i wore this to a swimming pool once and i never had any problems and me and my best friend had matching swimsuits i was sobbing hysterically as i took the money and sat on the porch waiting for my mom to pick me up I heard yelling inside, and the dad came out to give me 50 bucks and went back inside to yell at his wife inside the house some more. As it turns out, they filed for divorce because she was having an affair with another guy. She later revealed this information to another family that I babysat for, and they told me that the wife was insecure about her chest size. The dad was not a P-word, and his kids are doing great. This is classic projection. The cheater accuses everyone around her of being a cheater. Down in the comments, we have a similar story from Brandy Aiden Love. I babysat for a family when I was 14. The husband of this family was my dad's cousin. I called him Uncle Bobby. I would get up at 4 a.m. to walk down the street to their house, and Uncle Bobby left right after I arrived. The wife got home at 7.15 a.m., just in time for me to catch the bus to school. Since it was 4 a.m., I would wear my pajamas to their house, sleep on the couch until 6 a.m., unless one of the kids woke up and I had to be with them. Then, I would change my clothes and get ready for school. My job was to fix the two little ones' breakfast and wake them up for when their mom got home. I'd say goodbye, the mom would feed the kids breakfast, then take them to daycare so she could sleep. I was paid like 20 bucks a day. Everything was good, until it wasn't. The mom came home one day, and I was still in my pajamas because there was no school due to a water main leak. She flipped out on me. She said, you're wearing that to seduce my husband. She fired me on the spot after doing this for them for almost a year. What was I wearing? It was a cotton pajama set that looked like a baseball uniform. The logo was Winnie the Pooh, and the back had the word P-O-O-H, but the double O's kind of looked like double O's for like a baseball jersey. But according to her, everyone knew that Bobby was a huge baseball fan, and this was my way of getting his attention. That made for some very awkward family events on that side of the family until I stopped going. It was only my step family, so the only person who was disappointed was my grandpa. But still, my grandpa never let it go and continued to make comments to her until he passed away. You know, when you read a story like this, 
you just know it has to be real. Because if someone were sitting down trying to make up a story about entitled parents, you couldn't even invent the scenario. Saying that a 14-year-old girl is seducing a grown man with pajamas that has the word poo on the background because OO kind of looks like zero zero. It's, it's literally too insane to make up. Our next Reddit post is from that goofy random kid. I'm a 27-year-old woman, and I live in a rather nice neighborhood. My neighbor, an entitled mother, has a large dog and a rather destructive son who's an entitled kid. I have a pretty good financial situation, and I live alone because I inherited my house. I have a pretty big yard compared to Karen's yard, which is almost half the size. I don't have a gate for my yard, leaving it open for pets or animals to come right in. I work from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., so I'm gone for a long while throughout the day. Karen is the type of person to do a lot of gardening, so she doesn't like having her entitled kid in her yard with all of her tools. One day, Karen asked me if I would allow her son to play in my yard while I was at work. It couldn't cause any harm, could it? I accepted, but I did tell her that her son would have to be gone by the time that I got back from work. And everything went well, until I got my first cat. Keep in mind, the entitled kid would always bring his dog to my yard to play. I named my new cat Ginger. Ginger loved to bask out in the sun with the entitled kid and his dog. Until one day, I came home and Ginger wasn't outside. In fact, she was inside the house with a bite mark. I rushed her to the vet immediately where she was treated and wore some kind of bandage wrap around her waist for the next week or so. I checked my cameras to see the entitled kid trying to move Ginger out of her general spot so that he could sit there, and Ginger swiped at him, scaring him off. It seemed that the entitled kid's dog did not take kindly to this, and the mark wasn't a bite mark, but a swipe from the dog. I presented this info to Karen, who denied it and said, He's just a kid. Your cat is fine. I told her that neither her son nor her dog were allowed on my property again. She threw an absolute tantrum and told me that they should be allowed to use the yard when I was away. After all, you can't just let it go to waste. I then reassured her of my decision to where I said word for word, Ma'am, you need to leave. OP, if you really want this Karen to learn her lesson, then my advice is to take her to small claims court. Between the vet bills and the video evidence of the wound, this should be an easy slam dunk case. Our next Reddit post is from Shupex. This happened back when I was 13. I was hanging around a village park in the middle of a summer day with a mixed gender group of about six other 13-year-olds. Seemingly out of nowhere, this sweet little girl appeared, who we later found out to be seven years old. And she starts chatting with us about her pet dog and schoolwork and stuff. We were completely confused and kept asking where her mother or father was, and she just kept saying, I don't know. So anyways, my dog. This little girl started getting agitated, running about, trying to climb on trees and splash in a stream nearby. So we decided that we had to do something before she got hurt. A couple of the guys and girls decided to distract her by playing tag, treating her with kindness and running around the field with her. She was giggling and having fun. Meanwhile, one of the boys, Sam, called his mom who lived nearby to ask what the F we should do with this abandoned child. Just as Sam's mom was responding, we hear this almighty screech from the other side of the park. It was the entitled mother finally returning to collect her daughter. Get the F off my little girl, you perverts! We froze, like, what? We're 13, trying to play an innocent game with a lost kid in an open and public space while calling an adult for help. This adult woman continues to chew us out, focusing on Sam in particular because he had a buff frame and he looked far older than 13 years old. She started calling him all sorts of things. Disgusting, vile, inappropriate. Poor Sam was a sensitive guy, and he was almost in tears. She starts asking why we thought that it was appropriate to play tag with and speak to a little girl, and we were just bemused. We're kids ourselves, and we just wanted to protect her from getting hurt. Looking back at the situation, I understand that we should have called the cops immediately to protect us from lunatics like the entitled mother. But at the same time, we were kids and we didn't know what to do. Anyways, it turns out this woman lived on the other side of the park and had basically just let her kid wander out of the door and it took her a good 10 minutes to even realize that she was missing. 
OP, I can't really say for sure what was going on inside that entitled woman's head, but my guess as to what's happening here is she realized her kid was gone, she panicked, and then she was feeling so insecure about her being a terrible parent that she lashed out at just whoever happened to be around her kid when she found them. It's not that you were doing anything wrong. Actually, you were doing everything right. But by lashing out at you and calling you perverts and disgusting or whatever, she was shifting the blame and like getting rid of her own guilt and putting it onto you, which is just awful behavior. I'm not excusing what she did. I'm just saying that seems more logical. I, yeah, it is possible that she's a nutso Karen who thinks that you were actual perverts. I don't know. <laughs> I've read so many entitled parents stories, I still like want to hope that people have some grain of goodness inside of them, so I try to come up with like a rational explanation, but you know, it is just entirely possible that she's just another nutso Karen because we read stories about them all the time. I guess we'll never know. Our next Reddit post is from Spooky Girl. A few years ago, I lived in a house that was a block away from a public park. It was a very large park, and I noticed two soccer games occurring when I left one Saturday to go to the grocery store. When I returned home about 45 minutes later, I noticed there was a truck parked beside my property. The occupants of that truck were on my property. There were two kids dressed in soccer uniforms, their mom and dad, and a large Doberman. The Doberman was laying on a picnic blanket and the parents were setting up their family's picnic lunch. And the children were chasing each other all on my front lawn. I couldn't believe my eyes. I pulled my car into the driveway and walked over to the family asking them what are they doing on my property. The entitled mother then snarked at me. What does it look like? We're eating lunch. I asked, why aren't you eating in the public park? It's like a block away. And she responded, it's more peaceful here. In complete shock, I said, this is private property. You need to leave now. The mother's response was, go F yourself, you little B word. I was furious. I pay the mortgage, I do all the lawn work, and you think it's okay to trespass and tell me where to go on my property? So this was the easiest revenge ever. I walked right beside them to the outside tap, which was attached to my sprinkler system, and turned it on. The family started screaming and grabbed all their stuff as they ran to their truck. The mother and father screamed obscenities the whole time and said they were going to get me. Well, this is where revenge number two came in. I downloaded my security camera footage, which showed their license plate, and I brought it to my next door neighbor, who just so happened to be a cop who was working that day. The parents were charged with trespassing, and I had a smile on my face for the rest of the day. Down in the comments, we have a similar story from Venus Smurf. I used to never believe stories like this, until I moved into a home that butted up against a public beach. When I first moved in, I had people walking through my yard constantly. They'd use my hose to rinse themselves off, help themselves to my beach gear, and since I cleared the waste haul weeds that covered the entire yard when I moved in, they would camp out in my backyard. I caught a couple of guys stealing an old grill that the previous owners had left, and when I came out, they said they were helping me take out the trash. After that, I installed a fence and cameras. While I was installing the fence, a girl I'd never met screamed at me for blocking her path to the beach. She insisted that I had to build a walkway wide enough for her to carry a cooler through. And when I didn't respond the way she wanted me to, she threw her yogurt at me and accused me of blocking her public access. Legally, I couldn't put a fence on the beach side of my property, so people were always coming into my yard to use the grass as a picnic area or use my outdoor shower. They'd get so offended when I tell them to leave. They'd rip out the plants on the edge of my property to make seats for themselves. And I finally reached the point where I would see people coming onto my property and just pull out the hose. I'd accidentally spray them until they left. All of that ended when I brought home a very large and very grumpy dog. The dog was always completely contained, but the trespassers didn't know that and always took off when she started barking. This happened when I was a kid, so I wasn't told about the lawsuit until I was older. However, I do remember the bratty kids and the entitled mother. My grandparents and I had season tickets to our local hockey team for years. We sat in the same seats with many other families who also had season tickets. The seats behind us went through several season ticket holders over the years. One season, the Beverly Hillbilly sat behind us. 
The family had two entitled kids who would run around the section just screaming. Mind you, we sat behind the goal and there was no protective net above the glass. Running around during play wasn't just rude, but also dangerous because of the pucks that frequently went above the glass. The kids would kick our seats and sometimes even our heads. They would get massive sodas and spill them half the time. The entitled mother didn't pay any attention to her monsters and also had little regard to our personal space. After her kids kicked our seats one too many times that night, my papa snapped and asked her to control her kids. Don't tell me how to parent. They aren't hurting anyone, you crotchety old man. My grandfather said, really, because they kicked my wife and my granddaughter's head several times this season. They've also spilled soda on my granddaughter's coat. This isn't a playground. They're just being kids. You can just ignore them. We brushed it off because the kids stopped for a while. My grandfather was a pretty big guy with a harsh voice. Then, the entitled mother stood up and started messing with her coat, but because she was standing right behind my grandpa, it kept like draping over his face, which pissed him off. My grandfather pushed the coat off his face, and the entitled mother lost her mind. You just groped me! He touched my breast! Throw him out! Oh, BS! My grandmother said, How could he even reach your breast? He's sitting in his seat, and you're standing a row above us. I felt it! Your husband is a pervert! The usher saw the whole thing and escorted her and her kids out. They didn't return for the rest of the season. My grandmother recently told me that the entitled mother sued my grandparents and the arena for assault and harassment. The entitled mother lost her case because there was no way that my grandfather could have reached her breast from his seat and there were witnesses. That was our slash entitled parents. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.